Ming-Chi Kuo says Apple is cutting production numbers of the new iPhone SE due to lower than anticipated demand, and this kind of thing has happened before, but usually it never happens this quickly. So in today's video, we're diving into why exactly we think the most boring iPhone isn't performing that well. Let's begin. I think probably context of launches is one of the main reasons people are overall super whelmed with the SE3. It's not necessarily a bad option. I mean, it's cool that for under $500 you can get an iPhone with an A15 chip. And yeah, some people out there especially care about 5G now because all carriers are downthrottling LTE speeds because they gotta make room for more bandwidth on the 5G spectrum. So getting like the latest iPhone and of course the fact that Apple is still catering to people who want a home button, yeah, these are all somewhat decent things, but keep in mind some of the context when the iPhone SE 2 came out back in 2020, that device was objectively better than the iPhone 8. Probably the only thing they got rid of was 3D touch, but it was objectively faster, it had portrait mode, it had a better camera, they centered the logo on the back, and they eliminated the white bezels, like overall, iPhone SE 2 was just like so many ways better than the iPhone 8 it was replacing, and yet they lowered the price. When the 4.7 inch iPhone 8 was still floating around on Apple's website, it was $450. So Apple introduced a better option for less money, and I think that objectively across the board just came across as a pretty decent deal. No, it's not like better than a lot of those cheap Android phones that still have full screen OLED displays if you care about hardware and that's what you're aiming for, but for people who just want an iPhone and don't need fancy display specifications or don't need fancy camera features, the iPhone SE 2 was just like a knock out of the park and it was also the first time we'd seen Apple do something since the original iPhone SE that launched in 2016 so now with the launch of the iPhone SE 3 we're not getting that same like hit it out of the park impression of like wow this is just such a great deal and that price hike did not help at all now I know there's a lot of people out there that like to imagine inflation is not a real thing despite it being reported and documented by our government and I do believe that some of the manufacturing costs for the iPhone SE 3 3 did probably go up. That 5G modem could very well be the most expensive component in the entire device. So I'm not saying it was unprecedented or it was unfair for Apple to up the price by $30, but overall it still just did not help the situation considering this is pretty much the exact same design as the SE2. And yes, there are upgrades, but they barely even wanted to offer more color options. They basically just poured a little bit of gold into the silver paint and poured a little bit of blue into the black paint and color called it a day. And the bigger problem, I think, is that the general market that is interested in phones like the iPhone SE, they don't care about specifically what Apple introduced with this model. The biggest upgrades, of course, was the A15 chip and 5G. Do people who spend $400 on iPhones care about tech specs like that? Probably not. Maybe they care about battery life, but finding out that this new iPhone is going to cost more than their last one probably made it seem like not that great a deal. And it's also only been two years since the launch of the last SE, whereas back in 2020, that was the first iPhone SE that had been launched in four years. So it felt like a bigger deal, it was like more rare, and of course there were objective changes between those two models year over year. And of course the price going down $50 I think encouraged everyone to look at this as a better buy. But it's important to keep in mind that Apple has cut production numbers in the past. I remember reporting on them doing it for the iPhone XR and for the iPhone X. But the thing was, you normally read about that kind of thing a few months after the iPhone had launched, whereas we're hearing about iPhone SE 3 getting production numbers cut by like 20-30%, and the phone hasn't even really been out for more than a couple weeks. This is very, very early in its total launch cycle, and I think this says a lot about the fact that Apple was probably being pressured by Qualcomm and by their suppliers to, hey, can we get these 4G iPhones off the site? Because I imagine these companies don't want to keep manufacturing phones with 4G modems anymore. Carriers are trying to push everyone onto 5G and like, up upgrade your phone right now, come on, everybody needs to get on this 5G plan. So they're likely putting pressure on Apple to, hey, can you get rid of all the 4G iPhones off the site? And I bet Apple behind closed door meetings was like, hey, you know, we're still selling the iPhone 11, but we're planning on dropping that in September, and then we'll just discount the price of the iPhone 12 further. But after that, I bet all the carriers were like, uh, so what are you gonna do with the SE though? Are you replacing that soon? And Apple was like, eh, it's a special edition. We only update that thing every four years. And the carriers were like, uh, 
we're not gonna make 4G modems for you for another four years. You better switch that thing to 5G or you're not gonna be able to make it anymore. So that at least puts some hope in my brain that this wasn't like a big master plan that Apple was hoping, wow, the iPhone 12 sold so well, it's probably because everyone loves 5G. So if we introduce a 5G iPhone at a lower price point, that's gotta sell like hotcakes, right? And uh, no, Apple, I, I don't really think that's what people are interested in. And I have to take partial credit because probably a lot of you found that video about me describing how there's great budget iPhone alternatives out there. And the SE3 is not like a screaming good deal necessarily, but even through Apple's own certified refurbished, and I'm sure you can find even better deals on Amazon or through Best Buy or whatever, you can find iPhone 11s and 10Rs for under $500, sometimes under $400. And many people would argue that's a much better phone than the SE3 is because you get the full screen display, you get face ID, you get better battery life, better cameras, and those I think might stand out to the average consumer, particularly those who are on a budget might appreciate that a lot more. I'm hoping this isn't going to upset Apple too much because, you know, they were probably expecting the iPhone SE 3 to be kind of like a huge spike in sales in the midterm of the year, but at this point they're probably getting more sales for the green iPhone 13 series because people who buy those kinds of phones are likely more interested in that alpine green option. But yeah, when you change like hardly anything about an iPhone and you increase the price at the same time, I think that's just like the worst combination of scenarios. You know, like sometimes you get something like the iPhone 10R, which people are like, yeah, this is good. It's just a little pricey. And then you knock it down $50 less with the iPhone 11. And suddenly people all feel like, wow, this is a great deal because the phone got better and cheaper. That's what happened with the SE2 and with the SE3, we're not getting that ripe calibration of, oh, this is a good deal because it's more expensive than it used to be and all of the upgrades are pretty dang minor. Here's hoping Apple does something a bit more eventful with the iPhone SE next year. Please let me know what you think they should do down in the comments below. This is your Apple Shapiro. I'll see you all in the next one.